दुष्टंग वंदामी बंते धम्मंग वंदामी बंते संगं वंदामी बंते Good evening. <coughs> Good evening, huh? brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. Today is the first time I I come to this center. It's being a new center, huh? give a talk. Is it loud enough? No. No. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Okay. Tonight, the topic is uh, the Buddha's meditation. And uh, I start by saying uh, that uh, in uh, one or two suttas, uh, the Buddha said, uh, where the Aryan Eightfold Path is found, uh, there the four types of Aryans are found. So it is by practicing the Aryan Eightfold Path uh, that we become an Arya. In other words, the only way to get out of samsara uh, is the Aryan Eightfold Path. If you look at later books, uh, they will say different things. Uh, like uh, they say, there are 84,000 Dharma doors. But uh, unfortunately, these Dharma doors, uh, if you go, they will lead you into not only the wrong path, huh? they will lead you into the drain, into the pothole and all that. So we have to be very clear that only the Noble Eightfold Path huh, is the path taught by the Buddha. Now, there is a sutta in the Majjhima Nikaya on 1.7. Huh? where it is explained uh, exactly how to practice the Iron Eightfold Path. And in that sutta, the Buddha says uh, that the Iron Eightfold Path uh, uh, should be entered uh, through right view. There's only one door to enter the Iron Eightfold Path, right view. And it is also stated that after you get right, right view, uh, that will bring you, right view is samaditi, uh, that will bring you to right thoughts, uh, sama, samkapa. And that will bring you to right speech, uh, samavat, samavacha. And then that will bring you to right action, samakamanta. And then after that, will bring you to uh, right livelihood, uh, sama, ajiva, and then later uh, that will bring you to right effort, sama, vayama, and that will bring you to right mindfulness, sama, sati, and that will bring you to right concentration, sama, samadhi. Uh. So that is how the Aryan Eightfold Path is practiced. Uh. So the most important thing uh, <coughs> is to get right view. And this is confirmed by another sutta in the Satipatthana Sangyutta. Uh, there was a monk who wanted to go off and live alone. So he came to the Buddha for last minute instructions. And the Buddha actually wanted to explain the four Satipatthana to him. But the Buddha said, nah, purify the very starting point of wholesome states. And what is the starting point of wholesome states? The Buddha said, nah, 
sila that is pure and view that is straight. In other words, uh, we have to have uh, good sila, good moral conduct, uh, and right view. Uh, view that is straight uh, is right view. Uh, so you see also here uh, that uh, before you start embarking on this uh, path uh, to cultivate wholesome states uh, and get rid of unwholesome states, uh, you have to go on sila and right view. Uh. But there are, we see in the suttas, uh, there are some cases uh, of some people who don't have uh, sila, but because they have right view, uh, they can enter the stream. For example, once the Buddha spoke to 120,000 people. These people had never seen the Buddha. They had never heard the Dhamma. That was not long after the Buddha was enlightened. And uh, all 120,000 of them uh, attained stream entry. Another time, 80,000 people came to see the Buddha also for the first time. And the Buddha preached to them basically on the four Aryan truths. And also all 80,000 uh, attained steam entry. Another glaring case uh, is Angulimala. Angulimala, he killed uh, hundreds of people as a bandit. But because he had this uh, potential, uh, the Buddha went to him and uh, um, must have taught him the Dhamma. And then uh, soon after hearing the Dhamma from the Buddha, he decided to become a monk. So you see, once you attain right view, uh, your direction in life changes. Uh, that is uh, the mark of a, of a person uh, who has attained stream entry. Uh, no more interested uh, in worldly success, uh, name and fame, wealth and all that. Uh, so these uh, two cases, uh, you can see uh, that right view uh, is the very beginning. Uh, now, once you get right view, uh, it is called stream entry. Uh, and in the Sangyutta Nikaya 55.5, uh, Suttapati Sangyutta, uh, the Buddha said, uh, stream entry, uh, the stream refers to the Aryan Eightfold Path. So when you enter the Aryan Eightfold Path, uh, you attain stream entry. Uh, and that is the first path attainment. So, we want to know uh, how to get right view so that we attain stream entry. Uh. In the Majjhima Nikaya 43, uh, it is said there are two conditions for right view. Uh, the voice of another and focus attention as you listen. Uh, only two conditions. Uh, so, basically these two, uh, the voice of another teaching you the Dhamma. When you hear the Dhamma, uh, you have to digest it, digest it, understand it. If somebody teaches you the Dhamma in a foreign language where you cannot understand, it's impossible for you to attain sleep entry. You must understand. So, when you listen to the Dhamma, we are contemplating what the speaker is saying, uh, we are trying to digest. Uh, that basically uh, is vipassana. Because in vipassana contemplation, uh, there are four objects, uh, the body, feelings, mind, and dhamma. Of these four objects, uh, dhamma is the most important. Dhamma is the one uh, that brings us uh, stream entry. Dhamma is also the one uh, that creates many arahants. We find in the suttas and the vinaya, the first 1,060 arahants that was mentioned, uh, the first 1060 Arahant disciples of the Buddha, all of them uh, attained Arahant by listening. Because the Buddha had this psychic eye, uh, he looked for people uh, who had attained the post jhana. So, he, for example, he went to 1000 Jatilas, matted hair ascetics. They were worshippers of fire. They have no respect for the Buddha. 
But the Buddha went to them, just as an ordinary ascetic, stayed with them several weeks uh, and showed psychic powers. They also had psychic powers, that's why the leader thought that he was an arahant. But the Buddha showed psychic power so great uh, that he became convinced uh, that his cultivation was much better. So when he earned their respect, uh, then only uh, the Buddha told the leader, he said, Kasapa, you keep thinking you're an arahant, but you are not an arahant. And you are not walking the path to become an arahant. So there was a slap in his face. Uh, he was so much respected. Here somebody is telling him he's not an arahant at all. So he knew the Buddha's uh, meaning, uh, he, the message. Uh, he asked the Buddha to be his disciple. Mm. So the Buddha accepted him. And then all the 999, uh, when they saw, they also shaved off their hair and became disciples of the Buddha. And once they became disciples of the Buddha, then only the Buddha spoke the Dhamma to them. Listening to one discourse only, uh, all 1,000 attain Arahant Buddha. So it is not listening to the Dhamma alone uh, that brings you stream entry. Uh, that brings you only stream entry. Every stage of the Arya uh, if your mind is clear enough uh, and you listen, you will attain. A person without any jhana and listens to the Dhamma and understands, uh, he can attain stream entry and then become a Sotapanna. Another person with the first jhana or second or the third jhana. If he listens to the same Dhamma, he can become a Sakadagami. A person with uh, four jhanas, uh, if he listens to the same Dhamma, he can become an Anagamin or an Arahant. Uh, so the level you attain uh, of Arahant, Aryahut, uh, depends on the clarity of your mind, uh, which is depending on the jhana state you have achieved. Uh, uh. So after a person attains right view, uh, he understands the Dhamma and then he starts to practice. Uh, and once you have right view, uh, you will not automatically uh, have right thoughts. That's yes enough. Uh, because if you have right view, then uh, that will get rid of the wrong views. Uh, and then whatever you think, uh, your view is straightened. Uh, so your thoughts also are straightened. Uh, so you have right thoughts. Then after that, uh, because of right view and right thoughts, uh, you will also have right speech. Uh, uh, you, what you talk, uh, because whatever comes out of your mouth, uh, you have to think first. Yeah? After we think, then only we say. That is why if you have right uh, thoughts, uh, you will have right speech. And because of right view and right thoughts, uh, you will automatically also have right action. And because of right speech and right action, uh, you will also have right livelihood. Uh, you will not harm other beings. Uh, uh. So you find uh, after you get right view, uh, the other four uh, will automatically come. You will follow after some time. So for example, somebody like Angulimala who used to kill hundreds of people, uh, once he listens to the Dhamma, and he attains by view, uh, became a monk, uh, then his sila becomes pure. So you see, from right uh, view, uh, you have right thoughts, then right speech, right action, and right livelihood. The last three, uh, right speech, right action, and right livelihood, uh, is sila. Because our noble eightfold path, or Aryan eightfold path, uh, can also be said to be uh, sila, samadhi, and panya. Yeah. Uh, so, right speech, right action, and right livelihood uh, is sila. So once you get right view, uh, you will automatically develop uh, uh, pure sila. That's why the Buddha said uh, the very starting point of wholesome states uh, is right view and pure sila. Uh, now after that, uh, as a person continues to practice, uh, uh, we come to bhavana. Bhavana, a lot of people uh, translate it uh, or say uh, that it means meditation. That is not correct. That is not correct. It means more than just meditation. Bhavana means development.
If you look into the Pali dictionary, uh, you will find uh, bhavana means uh, development. You can also say cultivation. In Chinese, we can say xiu xing. Uh, mm. So, these uh, last three factors of the Aryan Eightfold Path uh, is right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Yeah. Now, this uh, this word bhavana, where do we find it in the suttas? Uh, is in the three ways of, of getting married, punya. If you want to get kong tak, kong tek, these are the three ways. Uh, sila, uh, adana, sila, and bhavana. Yeah? Dana is the easiest to do. Uh, Chinese uh, like to do dana. Uh, everybody likes to do dana. Because it's the easiest. Uh, and you want married. Everybody wants married. Yeah? Uh, so, uh, a lot of people do dana and then they stop there. But slightly harder to do huh, is sila. Uh, because it's harder to do, that's why people don't keep the sila. Uh. But what is harder to do, huh, the merit is more. Uh, so sila is more meritorious. And more meritorious, uh, these two huh, is bhavana. Dana and sila huh, is what we call Choisan, <laughs> Chai Sin. It gives you worldly blessings. Uh. Next, in next life, you want to become a Bill Gates. Uh. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> but Bhavana is what gets us out of samsara. This is Kong Tek. Kong Tak. Dana and Sila is Hok Tek. Hok Tak. Uh, worldly blessings. Uh. So Bhavana, uh, Development uh, refers to two things, uh, development of your character and development of your mind. The Buddha said, uh, if we want to be reborn in heaven, uh, we have to change our character uh, to that of a Deva or Devi, not by chanting Amitabha. Uh, you change your character over the years. Uh, to become just like a deva or a devi's character, huh? automatically when you die, huh? you are already a deva or a devi. In fact, before you die, you are already a deva or a devi. Huh? Those beings who have psychic power, they look into you, huh? they will see, oh, this is a deva or a devi. But if they look into you, you have a ghost <laughs> inside you. Huh? They cause you to have an accident, then you can become their boyfriend or their girlfriend. So, these uh, first two things, uh, uh, right effort and right mindfulness, uh, if you practice these two, uh, you are developing your character. Because firstly, to develop our character, uh, we have to get rid of unwholesome states and to develop wholesome states. This is right effort. But to do that, uh, we have to constantly look inside. And that is right mindfulness. Uh watch our body actions, watch our speech, watch our thoughts, the three karmas. Huh? Then watch your feelings. If you're, you become overheated, huh? uh, lose your temper, huh? then you have to notice huh? you have a bad temper, you have to change. If you have lustful thoughts, uh, then you have to notice. Huh? You have to continue this way. Huh? Uh, seeing porn every night you know, will land up as an animal. Uh, so, and then uh, feelings, and then our uh, perceptions, and then our attitudes. Attitudes are very important. When you're a big boss, uh, you tend to be proud and arrogant. And pride comes along with anger, uh, like you shout at people and all that. So, the last is Dhamma. Dhamma is. Uh, the best way to contemplate Dhamma is to listen, listen to the Buddha's words. Because uh, however much we contemplate, uh, our wisdom uh, cannot compare with the Buddha's wisdom. The Buddha's words uh, are words of wisdom uh, that we can never achieve uh, by ourselves. But when we listen to the Buddha, it becomes so clear to us, the Dhamma. That is why 
we have to listen to the Dhamma. Before the Buddha appeared in India, there were very serious yogis uh, who were willing to give up their life uh, to cultivate, to get out of samsara. So they endured uh, all kinds of ascetic practices, who uh, sing. Uh, and they thought uh, that is the way to purify their soul. But that was not the way. When the Buddha started on the spiritual path, he also did like that. You know? Restrict his food, eat only certain types of food, uh, and then uh, wear only certain types of uh, robes, etc. So, finally he found uh, that was not the way. So, in India, there were all these ascetics uh, practicing so hard. Some of them, uh, they attained the jhanas and got psychic powers, but uh, no right view. You could not find a single area. But after the Buddha appeared in India uh, and he started speaking the Dhamma, then Aryans started to multiply thousands and tens of thousands of Aryans. So that's why uh, uh, listening to the Dhamma is so important. Uh, and then once we get right view, then we get the five factors of the Aryan Dofur path, and then we practice the six and the seven uh, uh, to attain. Uh, development uh, of our character. Then development, this development of the character, uh, practicing these two things, uh, I said, uh, is contemplation. And contemplation uh, is vipassana. Vipassana during the Buddha's time uh, is this. Because cultivation uh, is something that we must do uh, 24 hours a day. When we are sitting, we are meditating. When we are not sitting in meditation, uh, we have to be mindful. Uh, that is why this uh, vipassana uh, is outside meditation. One nun told me, uh, she asked the teacher once, uh, she said, Saido, why is it I notice uh, your disciples when they are meditating, they are very mindful. But when they are not meditating, they are not mindful at all. So you see, some people think uh, you practice mindfulness only in meditation. No, you have to practice it 24 hours a day. It is because the Buddha's disciples uh, practice 24 hours a day uh, that they come to a stage uh, where they are mindful 24, 24 hours a day. And then they become Arahan. And after they become an Arahan, uh, the Buddha said, uh, you cannot find any fault with an Arahan because he is mindful 24 hours a day. He did not come after he became an uh, arahan, you know. Before he became an uh, arahan, he's already mindful 24 hours a day. Just like you want to go to heaven. Uh. It's not after you go to heaven only you become a deva or a devi. Now you have to become a deva or a devi inside. Then only you can go to heaven. So, when we contemplate, uh, we practice this vipassana. Sometimes we call nae kwan internal uh, contemplation, then we understand anicca, dukkha and anatta. This impermanence, suffering and non-self, uh, if we understand the Dhamma and then we see, compare with life every day, uh, and then slowly we understand what the Buddha said is really true. Especially this dukkha. When you are sitting comfortably with your legs crossed, uh, maybe in an aircon room, uh, how can you see Dukkha? But when your mother or your father passes away or your son is killed in an accident, uh, then you really see Dukkha. As monks, uh, sometimes we see Dukkha when we are asked to go for a funeral. When they take out the coffin, uh, you see the whole family crying so, so unbearably. Uh, that is real dukkha. No dukkha can compare uh, with the parting uh, of someone you really love. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That you don't see in your meditation. So, this uh, anicca, dukkha and natta, uh, you realize it uh, in everyday life uh, when you compare it with the words of the Buddha, what the Buddha has said and what you see, uh, then you realize uh, so in the suttas, the Buddha said, uh, 
we it's very important uh, that we get rid of unwholesome states. What are the three? Un, what are the unwholesome states? Uh, for example, anger, being revengeful, arrogance, domineering, and envy or jealousy, greedy, deceitful, having evil wishes, and then having wrong view, etc. So the Buddha said, uh, these unwholesome states uh, will bring us to the woeful realms of evil. That is why it's very important to get rid of unwholesome states. And we want to develop wholesome states uh, because this will bring us up. Bring us up. There is a sutta where a cousin of the Buddha, Mahanama, he came to see the Buddha. He said, uh, Bhagawa, Every evening I come to the monastery and I talk to the monks and all that huh? and listen to Dharma. Every night I go back to the city. Yeah? You know, during the Buddha's time, the monasteries, the forest monasteries, you know. So he say, walk back to the city yeah? in the darkness. Huh? It's afraid you might be killed by a mad cow or a, a horse or knocked down by a carriage, etc. He said when he's dying uh, in that fearful state, uh, would he go to a bad people? Then the Buddha said, don't worry, Mahadama, don't worry. For a long time, uh, you have taken refuge in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, uh, meaning you have listened to the Dhamma. And the Buddha said, uh, the Dhamma will bring you, the, the Dhamma gives you a, a, a elevated mind. And that will bring you to a good people. So no matter how you die, eh, if your mind is elevated, eh, you will bring you to an elevated place. Yes. That's why we want to cultivate ourselves every day. Eh. Our character is very important. Our character eh, will bring us to the type of people. For example, one old devotee told me eh, that auntie had a very nasty character, very bad tempered, envious and always cursing the relatives because of maybe property, division and all that. Nah. Two days before she died, nah, her dakula teeth came out. Long dakula teeth came out. And two days later when she died, nah, the teeth disappeared. Some monks say there is no such thing as lingun, nah, soul. Nah, but I believe there is. They say there is no soul because they are, they are wrong understanding of the meaning of the word soul. If you look in the dictionary, soul uh, is said, is defined uh, as the spiritual part of man, often assumed to be permanent. It is only assumed to be permanent. It's not necessarily permanent. But the Christian soul is permanent. So they use the Christian soul and they say, uh, uh, there is no soul. The Buddha did not say there is no soul. The Buddha said there is no thing that is permanent, everlasting. Everything is impermanent, keep on changing. That's all the Buddha said. So we have inside us a soul, depending on your character. If your character, you like this lady, fears like a Dakula, immediately after she dies. In fact, before she dies, the, the, the fierce ghost is coming out already. Because it is coming out two days before she died, you can see her Dakula. So there are some other cases uh, where some people, for example, the person who slaughters pigs, uh, those people who are their neighbors, they say uh, a few days before that person dies, uh, they start behaving like a pig, running around, squealing like a pig. They listen as all the hair stand up. So, so this uh, character is very important. Now, the last factor, uh, Sama Samadhi, uh, is defined as the four jhanas. If we practice the four jhanas, uh, we are developing our mind. Uh. In the Majjhima Nikaya 108, Herbal uh, Ananda was asked what type of meditation is praised by the Buddha. And he said the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. And he said the type of meditation not praised by the Buddha is when you meditate and you cannot get rid of the five hindrances. In the sutta, the Buddha said, 
we are blur blur huh? we don't have wisdom huh? because of five hindrances and these five hindrances obsess our mind huh? envelop us huh? so uh, we are enslaved by these five hindrances huh? then uh, we don't have wisdom so meditation huh? is actually from this sutta huh? you can find huh? the purpose of meditation is to get rid of the five hindrances and there's another sutta where he says uh, that uh, once you have attained even the first jhana, uh, you have got rid of these five hindrances uh, long term, not permanently, but long term. So unless you do some very evil karma like Devadatta, uh, Devadatta cultivated the jhanas until he had psychic powers. Uh, but because there are some people, they meditate too much, uh, they don't listen enough of the suttas. Devadatta, or they don't pay attention. When you listen to the suttas, uh, you have to pay careful attention. The, the, the sutta says, uh, Yoniso Manasika, focus attention. Uh, and then you have to examine the meaning also of the suttas, the words of the Buddha. Uh, then only you can understand. So somebody like Devadatta, uh, he didn't pay too much attention to listening to the Buddha's words. Uh, he wants to meditate all the time. Good, he got psychic powers, but no right view. So, because of his arrogance, uh, once if you don't have right view and you attain psychic powers, uh, then it's very dangerous. The ego uh, starts to balloon, becomes so big. Uh, he asks the Buddha to step down, let him take over the Buddha as its place. He said, Buddha is so old already. So, Buddha scolded him. He said, Who do you think you are? You want to take over? place. Uh, I never even asked Sarikutta or Moglana to take over. You are like spittle, the Buddha said in the Vinaya books. Spittle that people spit up. Said that of him uh, in front of all the Sangha. So he kept that inside him, uh, the grudge against the Buddha and decided he wanted to kill the Buddha. Now uh, once the thought arose he wanted to kill the Buddha, he lost all his jhanas, he lost all his psychic powers. So unless that thing happens, uh, once you attain jhana, you will have uh, got rid of the five hindrances uh, on a long-term basis. But one thing you must understand, a lot of people think uh, that the five hindrances are sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and worry and doubt. No. Only when these five things become very strong and they obsess the mind, enslave the mind habitually, then they are considered the five hindrances. Once a person attains the jhanas, uh, these five things uh, go down to a very low level. So low uh, that they don't obstruct you anymore. So the Buddha says you have eliminated the hindrances. So I like to give the simile of the lalang. If you walk through the forest or the jungle, uh, you have seven feet tall lalang. Uh, you try to walk through, uh, you cannot see. If there's a tiger in front or so, you cannot see. Yeah? Uh, and then as you walk through, uh, it cuts your hand, cuts your feet. So it's a big obstruction. But suppose you cut it down to one foot, 12 inches, uh, there's no more obstruction. It is still there. You can see very clearly, 12 inches, it's no more an obstruction. Yeah? Uh, so when you attain the first jhana, it's like cut down to 12 inches. When you attain the second jhana, it's like cut down to 8 inches. When you attain the third jhana, it's like 4 inches. When you attain the fourth jhana, it's like 1 millimeter. So little. That's why the Buddha calls the fourth jhana uh, perfect samadhi. So, in the suttas, the Buddha said, uh, in the Majjhima Nikaya 31, once you attain uh, even the first jhana, the Buddha calls it a supra-mundane state, a superhuman uh, Uttari Manusa Dhamma, a distinction in knowledge and vision worthy of the Aryans. Uh, and why, why does the Buddha call it a uh, uh, super mundane state or superhuman state. Eh? Because in the Majjhima Nikaya 26, eh, the Buddha said, once a person has attained the first jhana, he has blindfolded Mara. He has become invisible to Mara. How is it he has become invisible to Mara? Our consciousness eh, is in the sensual realm. Now we have, uh, in the world, eh, we have three realms. Sensual realm, form realm, and formless realm. Yeah? So, Beings in the sensual realm, uh, we have sensual desire, and we have male and female. 
But in the form realm, uh, it's unisex. No male and female. Once you have attained the first jhana, uh, your consciousness has transcended the sensual realm uh, into the Brahma heavens. Your consciousness is like, like Maha Brahma. Uh, but our Mara is in the sensual realm, so he cannot see you. When he looks into your consciousness, he cannot see. Uh, you have gone above him. Uh, that's why the Buddha calls it a supra mundane state. But unfortunately, uh, nowadays, uh, some ignorant monks, uh, they belittle the jhanas. They say, what's the use of jhana? When you attain jhana, you have no sati, no mindfulness. It just shows their ignorance. Uh, they, don't, they don't know the suttas at all. Uh, so what is the Buddha's meditation? This, as the Venerable Ananda said, uh, it is the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, and fourth jhana. What type of meditation did the Buddha teach? After the Buddha was enlightened, uh, when he taught meditation, uh, he taught Asuba meditation, 32 parts of the body. Uh, 32 parts is chanting the 32 parts of the body. La. Basically, head, hair, body, hair, nails, teeth, skin, flesh, sinew, bone, bone, marrow, kidney, heart, liver, midriff, spleen, lung, bowel, entrail, gorge, tongue, brain, bowel, phlegm, pus, blood, sweat, fat. Tear, grease, little snot, all of the joint you read. So you chant it forward and you chant it backwards. And there are two ways of chanting. If you want to cultivate samadhi, you chant fast. If you chant 32 parts fast, you can't think of anything. It's not like you chant Amitabha, Amitabha, Amitabha. You're still thinking of this, thinking of that. It's Amitabha. Because only one word doesn't anchor your, your mindfulness. 32 parts. Not easy for your mind to run. So you chant fast, that is cultivating samadhi. If you chant slowly, yeah, you can cultivate vipassana that way. You chant one, and then you think about it. You chant another one, and you think about it. Last time I started to practice this, yeah, when I chant uh, heart, liver, all this, uh, it's hard to imagine. Yeah. So what did I do? I asked the OT, go to the market, go and buy from the market, <laughs> fix heart, fix lungs. Fix liver, all this. Uh, then you touch it, you feel it, uh, soft or hard. Uh, looks exactly like this. A human parts very much like the pig, you know. <laughs> so it's used to, good to use the pig now because it's very similar to human parts. Uh. So, uh, Asuba. Now, after the Buddha's disciples practice Asuba, uh, some of them are uh, committed suicide. They, get, they become. They loathe the body. Normally, when we look at someone, we say that person is beautiful or handsome. It's only skin deep. They say beauty is skin deep. Yeah. So you see the outside looks very nice, but inside, when you contemplate, or you are dirty, got urine, got shit, got vomit, got pus, everything. So later when some of the monks committed suicide, nah, whenever Ananda pleaded with the Buddha to teach another meditation, then the Buddha taught Anapanasati. After the Buddha taught Anapanasati, nah, the Buddha said, nah, before his enlightenment, nah, he practiced Anapanasati. After his enlightenment, he also practiced Anapanasati. So the actual Buddha's meditation is Anapanasati. So, Anapanasati, it is said nah, in the uh, Anapanasati Sutta, Majjhima Nikaya 118, nah, the Buddha said, nah, if you practice Anapanasati yeah, with unremitting mindfulness, lah, you fulfill the four Satipatthana. So, a lot of people think, they have the wrong view, or they think, nah, Anapanasati, Samatha, meditation, nothing to do with Satipatthana. But actually, uh, uh, it fulfills the four Satipatthana. And uh, in the Majjhima Nikaya Sutta 44, uh, uh, it is stated uh, that the four Satipatthana are the basis of concentration. In other words, uh, to, to attain Samadhi, uh, you must practice Satipatthana. And also, uh, uh, in the Anuruddha Sangyutta, 
Aniruddha is one of the Buddha's Arahant disciples uh, who had great psychic power. He could fly like a bird, he could walk through the wall, he had the heavenly eye, heavenly ear, uh, all the psychic powers he had. And his psychic eye was so powerful, uh, 1,000 world systems, uh, he could see so clearly. Uh, so they asked him, uh, some of the monks asked him, what did you practice uh, to attain such great psychic powers? What did he say? The four Satipatthana. So actually, if you practice Satipatthana correctly, eh, you must attain jhanas. That is why there is a sutta in the Satipatthana uh, Sangyutta, where the Buddha said, a foolish, incompetent, unskillful monk eh, practices Satipatthana but is unable to attain samadhi. If you practice Satipatthana and you don't attain samadhi, eh, the Buddha calls that monk eh, Foolish, incompetent, unskillful monk. But a wise, competent, skillful monk, he practices Satipatthana, he will end up with the jhanas. That's why the four Satipatthana are called the basis of concentration. But uh, you see, Satipatthana is not so, actually not so easy to practice because it is said in the Satipatthana Sangyutta, a monk dwells contemplating the body in the body, ardent, clearly aware, mindful, having removed covetousness and grief in regard to the world. Similarly, he, he contemplates feelings, mind, dhamma, having removed covetousness and grief in regard to the world. So what is this, having removed covetousness and grief in regard to the world? When the six sense objects impinge on our six senses, uh, for example, we see something, or we hear something, smell, etc., if it is, uh, for example, you see a beautiful form, uh, you want to possess it. Uh, for example, a man sees a beautiful girl, he wants that to be his girlfriend. Uh, and that is covetousness. Uh, uh, or you see good food, you want to eat. Uh, that is wanting to possess. And then, if you cannot get it, uh, grief will arise. Uh, so, if you give up covetousness and grief, uh, that means uh, you don't want any more sensual pleasures. You turn your back on sensual pleasures, on worldly pleasures. Ah, that is a condition for practicing Satipatthana, I know. Not so easy to practice Satipatthana. That's why the Buddha asks people who really want to practice uh, to become monks and nuns. Don't look for worldly happiness, look for spiritual happiness. How many people are willing to let go? <laughs> but they want to practice Satipatthana. So, I talk a bit about this uh, Anapanasati. Eh? In meditation, eh, we have to sit, not necessarily to cross your legs. Eh? You can sit like Burmese star. You can also sit in a banku, you can also sit in a chair. You can also sit in the zafu, eh? the meditation cushion, which is high, and put your two legs behind, eh? like in the banku. Eh? stool. Uh, then normally when we meditate, uh, we have to keep our eyes closed uh, because we don't want to be distracted uh, by sights, sounds, smells and all that. And if we, and some people when you, when they close their eyes, uh, their mind wanders very, very wildly. Uh, then you can half close the eyes, uh, look like 10 feet away. Uh, half close, uh, but you don't pay attention to what is outside. Uh, and then we have to be mindful uh, of our breathing. Uh. And the Buddha said, uh, we have to be mindful of the breath. Uh, and mindful of the breath, uh, it's not mindful of, of one point, you know. They say books like the Visuddhi Maga, they tell you to contemplate on one point. But not necessary. If you find that contemplating on one point suits you, uh, it's okay. You find that watching the breath uh, as it goes into the nostril, goes down to your abdomen, and come out to your nostril again, uh, that is also okay. Stop, stop, stop.